uh, good morning students uh, in this present lecture i'm going to describe about uh, the qualitative data analysis in the previous class uh, i tried to explain and describe on what is uh, what is the very idea of uh, uh, the qualitative uh, research is all about okay i'm just going to like recollect those uh, points and then i'll start with and then, and then I'll, I'll move on to the idea of how to analyze the qualitative data okay the first point is that uh, in the previous lecture i tried to uh, explain that uh, the very idea of uh, the qualitative research is attempt to understand the life world experience this life world experience of from it's, it may start from individual to the group to the community so the main purpose is to understand the inner experiences by understanding the inner experiences we are trying to describe the social world social world or the reality okay and i'm just going to begin this in analyzing the qualitative data first of all we don't have any given set of rules first we have to keep this in mind there is no given set of rules for how to analyze the qualitative data we have only as a researcher or a kind of an, uh, as a sociologist uh, we can give only a kind of a guidance this guidance may help you to look at what kind of a data you have collected from the field okay and it will tell you how to organize the data very systematically you can organize it and you can, we, you can systematically classify those uh, data at the same time you can also get a kind of an inferences from those data okay so we can give one certain amount of an guidance but there are no specific given set of uh, rules this is this is first of all you have to keep it in mind okay so now i i get into the very idea of uh, what is what is this social world is uh, or the what is what do we mean by the social reality okay every situations for instance what is happening right now i'm taking a class okay uh, it's more again from the video lecture it's more again from indirect uh, teaching method or indirect uh, learning mechanism so the indirect learning mechanism is it's it's presently it is a kind of a situation so when you are you are trying to understand the social world or the social reality you are trying to understand the situation okay when you understand the situation what this situation means so the situation means here is that it's it specifically refers to the context specifically it refers to the context for instance i'm taking a class i'm taking a class in front of the camera this is the context so you are you have to clearly explain in which context the respondent the respondent as well as the researcher interacts okay then that's all the first one it's kind of a, the first one so you have to explain very clearly what is the context in which we are trying to understand the phenomena understand the phenomena so we have to clearly explain this context within which the phenomena occurs okay this is this is the number one number second is that you have to clearly look at when you are understanding the situation the first is the context within which the phenomena occurs the second one is that you have to clearly understand the interaction interaction that takes place between 
different set of an individuals or a kind of a within a group. That means an action plus an another action is an interaction. Suppose if a only one person is interact, only one person is doing an action, the other person is, is not, not like trying to respond uh, for the action is which is happening. That means uh, it is very partial in nature, which is very partial in very very partial in nature. That means like there is no such uh, largely a kind of an interaction which which is happening. So the interaction which means that uh, the people should participate. It's a kind of an participation. So the second idea of understanding the situation is that the first is the context within which the phenomena occurs. The second one is that you have to analyze what kind of an interaction which is taking place or uh, what is the reason behind the people participate uh, participate in a kind of an uh, event or in a kind of a function or in, 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 in any of the things which is happening. Okay, the third idea is that when you are understanding the situation, you have to understand uh, the means. Here, the means are a kind of an instruments or are a kind of a uh, purely put it in the other way is that it's a kind of an instrument through which an action happens. Okay, for instance, I'm taking a class, um, I'm taking a class through the wire medium of a technology that is a kind of an, uh, the camera which is placed in front of me. So the means here is that a kind of an instrument here in, in, in this context, uh, a kind of an, the video lecture, the video lecture is through a kind of a placing a camera in front of me. Okay, so that's, you have to clearly explain that what are the means which you are trying to use to achieve your goal. So the fourth one is that the goal. The goal is the teacher. Or taking the class. Suppose if you want to analyze this uh, indirect learning methods or a kind of an uh, indirect learning mechanism which is evolved uh, in the in the context of the COVID. For instance, what is what is making uh, the academic and the academic institutions to think about, uh, for instance, uh, indirect method of learning is that. It's the context, the context of the COVID-19, that's a phenomenon which has occurred. So the infraction is that uh, we have to make uh, the students to learn uh, because we are not able to meet directly. So there are problems in uh, having a kind of in the direct participations. So we are moving to an indirect participation. So when we move to the indirect participation, we need certain means. That means there are certain instruments which are required. So instruments may be a kind of in the software, it may be a kind of in technologies which is required. So uh, we try to collect almost all the certain levels of means to achieve the goal. The goal is to teach the students or taking the class. Then after taking the class, once the class is over, then we look at the video and then whether we are satisfied with the video and then we'll be able to upload it. Okay, this is what the situation is. This is what the situation is. Okay, uh, on the other hand, every situation has an order. This is the next level. You have to, as a researcher, as a qualitative researcher, you have to understand that uh, every situation has an order. And this, we call it as the situational order. situational order. So for instance, when the actor participate, when the individual participate, they clearly follow this order. They clearly follow this order, which means uh, each and every situation has a structure. Within which the action takes place. So without the structure, action doesn't happen. Without the action, the structure, the, the, the structure doesn't form. So what is happening is that it's a kind of a cyclic. Uh, if the structure wants to be produced, the action must be happening. The, the action is happening so that the structure provides. So this is what the situation order is. Very simplified understanding of every situation has a uh, situational order. The situational order is uh, decided or determined by the norms, the normative and the the values, the normative order as well as the, the values which are
placed within the situation. For instance, uh, uh, when, whenever a kind of an uh, uh, the student and the teacher in fact, so that is the situation in order. There is a kind of an expectation is that uh, uh, every students are supposed to follow a kind of a certain normative order when they interact with the uh, faculties. Okay. Uh, similarly, when you when, whenever like uh, in a work situation, so there is a kind of an order. Uh, whenever a kind of an the employees goal are in the uh, lower state of the hierarchy, when interact with the higher state straight off the hierarchy, they will be kind of in having a kind of an order, the normative order. They they are supposed to follow. That means a kind of a uh, very clear cut order which is prevailing within each and every situations so you have to understand that what is the normative order of that okay so when you understand the situational order you are understanding the normative that means there are certain rules and certain resources which sets the action which are supposed to be happening okay uh, so this situational order is is a must okay so for instance for example when you look at the situational order even one can look at look into or look from within the formal structure as well as the informal structure as well as it may be a kind of a private as well as public okay public so you have to clearly understand that as a researcher so whenever uh, you are trying to observe certain things we should clearly understand it that uh, whether the conversations or the whether the social world you are understanding the social reality from from within the formal situations or from the informal situations or from the private world or from the public world so you have to clearly demarcate this clearly you have to demarcate this okay because when you when you demarcate for instance whether it is the formal Context or a kind of an informal context, or is the private context, or is in the uh, in the context of the public. Uh, we are we are collecting the data, we are observing the situations. When you do this, then you are able to explain this normative and the value orders, the rules and the resources which sets the situational order. When the situational order is set, that means you are able to understand the context. When you are able to understand the context within which the phenomena occurs, then you are able to think about the interactions. So within the interactions, you are trying to look at the means as well as the goals, whether it's a teaching or taking a class. So this is this is how things. This is how you have to look at the qualitative research in general. So when you, I just move here. When the when you are understanding this, the normative and the values. Okay, how do you understand it? You understand it through two things. One is through the thought process. So what an actor thinks, what an individual thinks about a particular situation or a particular person or a particular place. So you are trying to understand the thought within that particular situation. At the same time, what kind of an action which takes place. So you are, you are trying to correlate, you are trying to relate it with the thought and the action. For instance, somebody will be telling something in front of others, but their actions will be something different. So you will be able to understand that, that what is the difference between the thought and the action. So someone is telling some ideas, but their actions are completely different. So what is the difference which is making? Okay, so you will be able to clearly explain this when you understand the violation, when you understand the situational order. So when you understand the situational order, what kind of a violations which happens? That means the violation in terms of a normative order, the violation in terms of the values. So everything you will be able to try to look at and analyze, understand and then come to a kind of an analysis. So what is the description of the qualitative data is that, the reflection of the qualitative data is that it has to capture the thought, at the same time it has to capture the action aspect of it. So if you miss this, both the thought and action, you will not be able to do a quantitative research. Okay. So the next, I'll be moving on to the things which you have to keep it in mind before like analyzing the data. So what kind of a things which, which a qualitative researcher is supposed to keep within the mind before analyzing the data. Number one is that 
the researcher is supposed to know his or her predispositions. Know the one's own dispositions. Know the dispositions. That means each individual actor may have a kind of a predetermined thinking or predetermined thoughts. So the, these predetermined thoughts, suppose when you are looking into a kind of an uh, mm, certain, certain you go to a village and you are you are keeping a kind of a predetermined thought about okay the village is always a kind of an you go to a village place wherever you go so you have a certain predetermined thought about a particular place so you go with that and all your observations will be based on this all your observations your predetermined thinking will guide your observation first of all so that the, the 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 fact is that so you have to check what kind of a predetermined thoughts you have about a certain person it may be a person it may be a place or it may be a kind of an event which is happening for instance uh, you may be uh, by just looking at a person you will be having a kind of a different interactive thing okay this person is like a kind of an uh, a very very uh, kind of an arrogant or a kind of an this person might be a kind of a pleasant personality you will be having a kind of a predetermined thinking so that that predetermined thinking which will influence your observation process when you are in the field as well as after collecting after doing a kind of an observation you, you will be able to come up with the data okay so when you are analyzing the data this will also influence the observation at the same time, this will also influence in analyzing the data. So that means it will lead to a kind of an um, uh, it will lead to an invalid conclusions. That's the reason that most of the time there is a critic is that uh, this unchecked disposition which which may lead to a subjective disposition, which may lead to the subjective thinking or a kind of an uh, it, 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 it may result in a biasness subjective in nature okay you can put it very simply subjective in nature at the same time it may be a kind of a biasness which is being introduced uh, within the research context that's the reason is that you have to we may be having a kind of an unchecked predetermined thinking about a particular place or a person or an event which is happening. So you have to clearly list those what kind of a predetermined thinking. In certain cases, for instance, certain people will be like more an ideologically inclined. So that ideological inclinations the ideological inclinations which will influence the observation as well as the analysis of the data. So suppose if you have a certain ideological inclinations, you have to clearly tell that what kind of an ideologies you have, okay, you have before beginning the study. Because you are, you are trying to neutralize this position, you are trying to neutralize the subjective positions, okay. So you can neutralize the subjective positions or biasness by clearly describing your position, a researcher's position. When you are clearly describing your your limitations, your your limitations, your inclinations, everything that may reduce that may reduce the uh, subjectivity uh, within the research. So first, know your know the dispositions, know the dispositions in observation as well as in analyzing the data. The second one is know the questions. Always you should keep it in mind that uh, what kind of a questions okay which guides your observations okay what kind of a questions which may guides always remember that these questions are evolving in nature before the beginning of the field you may be having a certain questions okay 
but when you enter into the field these questions get revised okay this this revival happens this revival of this question which happens with a new kind of an observation which comes new observations newer level of an observations you are getting from the field every day something new new things are happening so when the new things are happening you are able to revive you are able to revive the questions which you have asked earlier so this revival is helps you to bring newer observations at the same time it will, it will help you to categorize the data categorize the data the more thematic formations the more the kind of a thematic formations would happen number third is that you, we are also supposed to understand that uh, theoretical limitations or theoretical saturations so this theoretical saturation is that over in one point of a time over at one point of a time you will be able to get the same repeated information same repeated information same set of repeated informations you will be able to get so that means you have you have reached a certain saturation point what do you need either you have to change the person or a group or a place or a kind of an event so by by repeatedly changing the place group or a kind of a place which will give you certain new set of information which will be able to you will be able to generate more and more more and more informations okay at the same time you are also supposed to look at a kind of an anomalies there are something something which is a kind of a very very abnormality which happens uh, anomalies are always a kind of a crisis a crisis situations okay something which you don't at all even understand it so those crises or even you are not able to understand certain things which is happening within the situation or the things which is happening within the field you you have to be you have to be very 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 conscious about those crises which is happening anomalies which is happening within because these anomalies which will guide you to a newer level of an information or it will help you to arrive at newer understanding so you will be able to get the newer understanding with the anomaly anomalies or a crisis okay so you have to look for that anomalies crisis which happens so how the anomalies or crisis which happens it depends on the situations it depends on the uh, situation okay uh, for instance actually like uh, for instance uh, when i was when i was doing a kind of a research in solar energy so one point of a time one point of a time i i got a kind of an um, uh, i i had an appointment with one of the uh, managing director of the firm okay he was asked me to come to a kind of an instructions so i went there as a kind of a research student so i was explaining so he asked me to explain he asked me to explain uh, what is what is the what is my research is all about so when i explained all my research objectives and everything so he he started like uh, like replying it back to me that no 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 whatever you are trying to do these all these things are completely an outdated one so this is this is not at all relevant to the present situations so you are your your research is completely for instance uh, uh, 10 years back for instance he he gave the example of an um, idea is that if you try to look at the firm's production capacity so i was questioning that uh, the firm's production capacity so he i told that none of the firms were having a kind of the production capacity more than 100 megawatts in indian context but he replied that no you know that uh, the firm's production capacity is right my firm's production capacity is right now more than 200 megawatt production in volume production okay so that means you are outdated so it was a kind of an uh, i couldn't even understand what kind of an interaction which is happening because uh, i went with the thought that to get at informations the radar actually like he tried to completely refute my arguments so this is what the anomalies is this is what the anomalies is so i couldn't adjust with that situation so after that i i came out of it but when i came out of it i took all the interview notes clearly written interview notes 
then slowly uh, the situation went on and i was like i kept those notes aside uh, i didn't even look at for for almost again for one to two months or three months period of time then i was trying to really look at what is the production capacity of what is the the phones the highest production capacity in modern production so when i looked into that none of the firm has crossed 200 not even 100 then i i, I tried to understand that uh, actually he he is trying to extract as much as possible information from my research that's a where that uh, uh, he took me to almost a 10 years back to collect all the informations so that he will be able to incorporate those informations in developing the firm okay so that's an indirect method so as a researcher i become a kind of a respondent and he become a kind of an uh, the researcher okay so this is what the anomalies that help me to write the power relations explain the power relations or the researcher's position in collecting the data what kind of an hurdles or what kind of a problems which they face in trying to collect the data so that helped me to narrate the entire the structure of the firm relations or or the existence of the firm spv firms in indian context okay so this is what the anomaly is okay good another one of the example of an anomaly is and the fifth is that always share the data whatever the data you 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 are trying to like uh, collect from the field either you have to tell to your research supervisor or you have to explain it to your team members okay so when you are interacting with the team members you will be able to like verify whatever the data you have collected whatever the things which you you have observed uh, maybe you will be able to get a kind of a newer insights for the observations you have done okay so always sharing is the most important and the discussions are the most most important thing in qualitative research at the same time teamwork normally uh, uh, the teamwork is very 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 a kind of an organizations may do uh, a kind of a teamwork but as a researcher we follow a more a kind of an individually we do the, we observe and we collect the data but if you are working as a team you have to give disperse whatever the data you have collected observed you have to discuss it and then you have to come to a conclusion to get a kind of a clarity on what you have collected as a data okay so this this five steps these five important points or must before beginning the qualitative data analysis first you should know the disposition okay that means the predetermined thought attitudes of yours your inclination ideological inclinations your limitations everything you have to clearly explain it and the next thing is that you should know the questions what kind of a questions you are having what kind of questions you have within your mind before beginning the study okay so these questions these questions which will be getting revived over and over a period of a time whenever the observations you are doing or your understanding comes then this question gets revived so at the same time this will your understanding which will help you to categorize the data then you should also know the theoretical limitations or the saturations the theoretical limitation of the sa- theoretical saturation is that repeated informations you get okay uh, and you are not able to get newer insights that means you are not able to develop new concepts that means you have arrived at repeatedness okay and the third is you have to look at that anomalies a kind of an abnormality which happens within the research research situation as well as the researcher's mind at the same time the respondents sometimes the respondents become a kind of an uh, get it gets or he or she gets an angry and he will be reacting to us so you have to be very clearly patiently observe why things are happening why things are happening what is making a kind of a respondent to react in such a manner so this all will help you to arrive at a kind of an the data or you will be able to get a better data or better insights at the same time share the data teamwork is a must okay if you're doing an individual research and uh, you can share it with uh, whom you whom whom you have the trust okay so share with those people and get the insight and you try to reproduce it so keep this in mind before analyzing the data at the same time before collecting the data also
this is the before beginning the qualitative data analysis. The first one is that documentation is the most important. Without doing the documentation, you will not be able to enter into the analysis. So the documentation is the must. So the documentation, which means here is that it's the data. The first one is that a a is the, the data is the most important thing. So the data you will be able to come through, introduce. So the whatever the interviews you take, you have to clearly take notes. So once you take the notes and at the end of the interview or at the end of the day, you have to elaborate the notes very clearly. You have to elaborate it. That's a only thing you have to do. Uh, you have to write and write and write. So this is number one. Number three is that you have to always these notes should be clearly written, date wise, date wise, which is just to be very precisely, which is which we have to write it. At the same time. And the next is that you can also use, uh, for instance, the various other reports which you can collect. The reports, maybe it's from the state report, the state industry, or even, for instance, in certain cases, NGO firms or any research reports which is already produced. These documentations are must. So you have to clearly look at uh, what kind of a report, whether it's a, the report which is produced by the state or the industry or the industrial associations, for instance, uh, uh, various trade chambers, uh, as well as NGOs, firms, and then the researchers' reports or academic reports which is already produced. So whenever you are, you are able to collect these reports, you can also correlate with your notes. Okay, that helps you to evolve certain categories. Certain categories you will be able to evolve at later point for time. So the data and the reports are the must. Okay. And the second is that it's it's the most important thing. Once you are able to document it, then the next part will be coding. Next part will be coding. Coding is always it's a kind of a process. It's a process through which different set of themes evolves. You will be able to evolve different set of themes by clearly uh, giving a kind of a coding. So how the coding process happens? There are, I'm going to explain two set of a coding. Two set of codings. One set is open coding. The second one is axial code. What is open? Second is axial coding. Okay. The first one is that what is open coding? What is open coding? What do we mean by open coding? Okay, open coding is always it's again from description. Primary preliminary, a preliminary description of a place, person, or a situation, or any event which happens. A very simplified description. Okay, and then you move on to once the description is over. So you have a kind of a clearly narrated description which you have in your hand. Then after that. Within the description, what you are supposed to look, what you are supposed to look. The first one is that what? What is the phenomena? What means? What is the phenomena you are looking for? This is the question. What is the phenomenon you are looking for? You are looking at. Okay, so you have to within that whether you are within. Place, you, are, you are able to look at certain things about the person, maybe you are understanding the character, maybe you are understanding the attitudes in the situation, you are understanding the situation in the totality of the context, or your event, some, something which is happening. So, what phenomena you are looking within this? So, you have to keep this in mind. Number second, how? 
The second is the how. Identify. Identifying different set of identifying different set of aspects in and around the phenomenon. So you are able to explain very very uh, clearly that uh, what kind of an aspects different set of an as aspects which is happening in and around the phenomenon okay suppose when you when you want to understand certain place okay uh, the maybe a kind of an, those place kind of for instance uh, the place which is being affected by a kind of an historical tragedy for instance mobile gas tragedy so you are looking at the, the place so when you go to uh, the place uh, in which the Bhopal gas tragedy has occurred, you will be able to see a kind of a complete a mere silence. Okay, so the silence is a kind of an inferences. The silence is a kind of an inferences you will be able to get. This is what identifying different set of an aspects in and around a phenomena which has occurred. So you look at how. Number third, the question is that whom. So when you are understanding who, you are understanding the actors. Different set of an actors involved in or involved within a particular situation or a particular event or a particular place. So you have to look at explaining the actors. So for instance, in the case of the Bhopal tragedy, it may be a kind of an industry for the government, public, so all, all are being involved with that. Okay. So the ones what? How, who? The fourth is for what? For what? Okay, that means you are, you are trying to look at certain reasons for what? Okay, at the same time you are also trying to look at when and where, wishing. When and where, that means time and location number six you are trying to look at the finally uh, what is the means what? means that means you are trying to look at the strategies tactics you are trying to understand this is when you are, once you collect and document the data, after the documentation of the data is clearly writing the notes, written notes, then once clearly written notes are done, then you are coming to, you are arriving at the coding. The coding is more kind of an open coding. This is more, after the notes is more kind of a generalized writing. So when you do the notes, you have to give certain codes. Uh, certain specific important things you have to put a kind of an underlining. So these are something which is, which is important. So those underlining or what you think it as a kind of a most important thing, then you, you take it and put it in the kind of an open coding and description format. So when you are when you are within the when you come to the description format, whether the description is about the place, it's about the person, or is it about the situation? or it's about the kind of an event, maybe a kind of a conflict which you are trying to describe. Okay, so you have to clearly narrate that what kind of a conflict which is happening, which has happened over a period of a time. So when you look at this event which is happening, then the first is that what is the phenomenon? How it happened? Who's the actors involved? For what reason? What are the reasons? Okay, so you are trying to narrate the reasons for it. Then the fifth one is that when and where, time and locations, and the finals of what means, strategies and statistics. So once this is done, the open coding is done, then you will be able to get into the idea of axial coding. So the axial coding is here is that, the first is that,
it's a phenomenon and you have to write the context so once the first one open coding is done this excel coding will be very very much easier context and the second one is that intervening intervening conditions next intervening conditions so that intervening conditions are the means means reasons so for instance it may be a kind of a technology so once this is done so you will be able to look at what is what is the implications of this what could be the consequences implications and then primarily after that you will be able to look at certain strategies if you want to take it and understand it okay so the axial coding is based on the phenomena the relations with the context the phenomena in relations with the intervening conditions it may be means reasons and the technology and then you are trying to look at the different set of and strategies you want to take or address it and what is the consequences of the strategies which as a researcher you try to take so once this open and axial coding is done and from here only you will be able to get into the establishing the relations establishing the relations so how to establish the relations here? so uh, as as a kind of an uh, a kind of an uh, organizer i would like to know what is what is what is the what is the implications or or what is what the students have learned from students in the faculty communities have learned from the workshop which has been organized whether it is a success or it's a kind of a failure so i would like to look at two set of questions two set of questions um uh, what is the what is the relevant relevance of the workshop which has been con conducted very recently in terms of generating ideas or the research ideas how far it is helpful in evolving new set of research ideas at the same time i also i want to understand uh, uh, the question of uh, how it helped in the creative understanding creative process always remember that the creativity is linked to the idea of the research ideas without being creative you cannot have a kind of an innovative research ideas so first of all uh, primarily it's the act of creativity which leads you to understand and the uh, which which leads you to evolve new set of research ideas so i want to interlink to these two aspects okay uh, first is that how far the the workshop which helped me to be creative so that i am able to gain certain set of and i am able to develop certain new research ideas maybe a new research ideas in terms of a topic in terms of a, a kind of a research questions new research questions or new experimentation process or new ways of analyzing the uh, data so how far this helpful so i i want to know this two things simultaneously so i write it here hi moderate 
so I will be asking uh, the each participant to write on this. Okay, so when a person is able to tell that, uh, for instance, there is a relation, there is a correlation between the creative process, there are certain things which is made me to think creatively, at the same time, which gives an idea to evolve new set of research ideas. It's, there is a correlation. That means I put it in a high category. Then there are certain people that, uh, maybe a kind of a half a half things. Uh, somebody would say that uh, you know, I only got the research ideas but not on creativity, then then I put it in the moderate case. So the, then the second person, is, third person is going to narrate that uh, to, uh, the, I, I'm, I'm not able to relate it with uh, uh, the research ideas at the same time the creativity. So then that means like uh, uh, the, the relations, the, the relations between the event and the individual. So this is what the causal relations I want to understand. So I will be based on this high moderate flow, I will be able to narrate this, even individual relations, whether it, it, the workshop has produced high amount of an impact on the thinking or not. Finally, I will be able to come and tell that whether it has produced any level of change in thinking about the research or not. So this is what highly kind of the qualitative research is highly helpful uh, for instance this kind of an ideas. This kind of an idea. Suppose but for instance this is highly impractical. This is highly impractical. You think that if the participant is more than hundred more than hundred and then the we are asking all the hundred participants to write on these lines. Okay. Just for instance, even for instance, uh, uh, we are asking you to write 300 words and 300 words. And then at the end of the day, you have very huge amount of a bundle, very huge amount of a bundle, which as a researcher, they have to go through. They have to go through by line by line by line so that the coding can be done, so that the kind of an open coding, axial coding can, can do. Okay. Uh, that's the reason that we move on to the quantitative research.